I'm beach fishing a big hole really close to shore. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Welcome to another beach fishing adventure. I'm back down at the beach and tonight I'm gonna to once again tell you everything that I'm doing, explain why I've chosen this spot and hopefully we're gonna have some fun and catch some really great fish. Make sure that you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I really appreciate it because it certainly helps my channel on YouTube. So let's get into it. Today there's a reasonably large swell running. It's approximately two metres plus and it's coming from an easterly direction. So it's hitting all of the beaches on the east coast here pretty much straight on. So it's very hard to get places that are protected from the swell. So on this beach where I am here, just watching my rod out of the corner of my eye while I'm talking. <laughs> um, on this beach where I am here, this is a really big beach and there's a lot of water washing in. I've actually walked a few hundred metres along the beach to find this fairly deep hole which is really close to shore behind me. So I'm planning to fish here over the next hour or so. It's currently, well it's 4.30 now. High tide tonight is at 6.22. So it's about half an hour after dark, the high tide. So a good time to be fishing. I tried to catch some live mullet earlier this afternoon but my usual spots didn't produce any mullets, so I was not able to catch any live bait. So what my plan is tonight is I'm starting off with my mixed grill. I've got my lighter rod, I've got a half pilchard and a beach worm bait. So I've got two different baits on that line. And what I'm hoping to do is catch a salmon or something that I can use and slab that up and take a nice fillet and then put a large fillet bait out on my big rod to have that in there around the high tide, um, just on dark. So I hope, you know, there could be a good fish coming into this gutter, hopefully. Oh, I think I've got a fish, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, it's probably a salmon, you know how it is. But, um, have I still got it? Yeah, no, it's swimming in. I threw out a whole pilchard because I don't have a slab bait yet. There's a fair bit of wash just here. These waves are, are quite powerful. So it would be a challenge. It would be a challenge to land a big fish here tonight. You'd have to be really careful. You can see I've actually got a, an 8 hook on here. This is a small salmon. And I just thought while I'm waiting, I might as well chuck this out. And I threw a whole pilly on there. So the good thing is, is I've just caught myself some bait, which is fantastic. So anyway, where was I? So I've chosen this spot. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's stunning. There's been an offshore wind blowing, but it's kind of calming down a little bit now. So it'll be really pleasant over the next hour or so having a fish here and be interesting to see what we can catch. So this is a good way to start, at least I've got some nice fresh bait. So my plan is now to put another bait out on this rod and then just hold my other rod that has the beach worm and the half pilchard on it. Just relax and enjoy that and uh, enjoy the fish. I mean, certainly there's always some way that you can go you know, depending on the conditions. And uh, this is, I don't normally fish in this particular spot, but I thought it looked good, so that's why I'm here. This is the rig that I'm using on my light beach outfit. I've got two hooks, or two, two baits. So I'm just gonna grab it and show you. Look, this is just a basic thing. I've got a short leader. I've got two hooks here. I've got a stinger hook. Let me just have a look. It's just what I had in my bag. So I've got those two hooks there like that. This one is uh, running on the line. See how it's loose like that? So what I do is I put this into my half pilchard, then I pin that into the top of the pilchard, and then I tie a half hitch around the, hop of the top of that to hold the pilchard on. So I've got a pilchard bait there on the bottom, and my sinker, which is a star sinker, 
it's running in between, like you can see, I've got another swivel further up. It's running in between these two swivels. So it's kind of like a semi-running sinker. So you can imagine you've got your sinker down here with your pilchard bait on the bottom. And then I have a three-way swivel at the top here where I've got a relatively short leader where I'm fishing with a beachworm bait. Now, I don't find, even though I've got two baits, I've, they very rarely tangle. You can see if I bring this one up and bend it up, they don't quite meet when they're both, both lines are fully stretched out, but they almost never tangle up, so that's not an issue. I could probably use a smaller snap swivel there, that's a little bit clunky, doesn't matter. But at the moment, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting my beach worm and my half pilly on and don't have to cast it out very far. And at least then, sometimes the fish prefer one bait over the other, you don't know. So it's, it's a good idea to do, you know, a double whammy, a two pronged attack, have a couple of different baits on the one rig. I like it. Um, I use it quite a lot. So I'm gonna get another half pilchard on this and, and chuck it back out and hold it. Yeah, it's quite a neat bait. And because you've got two hooks in there, very high probability of hooking up to the fish. And pretty easy to cast, not too um, cumbersome. So, gonna whack that out. Oh, I got him this time. <laughs> Obviously still had some bait, that's good. Oh, I can see it's jumping out of the water, so it's a salmon. That's interesting, my, um, my bottom hooks are gone. Where the, the, the pilchard bait, look at that. It's been cleanly bitten off. Actually, the line is fairly frayed just there. So what that tells me is that that would be a tailor for sure that's done that. But thankfully, I pre-made a world's deadliest rig with the wire trace, I've got it up in my bag. I'm gonna switch over and put the bottom half of this rig, the world's deadliest rig, which has got the, um, the two hooks set up and the wire. We catch so many of these salmon on the south coast. Really, it's a blessing. It's amazing. And we eat them all the time. They're awesome, fantastic fish. So I've been bitten off by a tailor I don't really want that to happen again. I think I've got 20 pound fluorocarbon on here, so... I hope you don't mind me chewing it off. <laughs> Come here. It's just the knot part. <clears throat> That's tough. Alrighty. Um, so I made up a, a rig, so I just use these empty uh, peanut butter containers. They're handy just to put one or two rigs in. So I've got my rig there ready to go. I've also got a little uh, sharpening stone that I use to sharpen the barbs of the hooks. They're really handy, those little sharpening stones. I highly recommend having one in your bag or your tackle box because they don't take up much room. They're really good. I only made up one of these, but I'll only need one. And actually, oops, look, I've got some braid scissors. <laughs> So I, I actually meant to bite this 
swivel off on the other side. <laughs> so I'm going to do it the easy way this time. Cut it with those braid scissors. Now I've got my rig, I'm just going to tie it straight onto this bottom section using the clinch knot or half blood knot. Just going to go one, two, three, four. Four's enough. Put it back through the, the loop. I can see the hole, yes there it is. So I'll put it back through the loop and then back through the other hole. Like that. Hold the tab there. Oops. Pull it tight. Just pull the tag tight. Alrighty, need to put another pilly bait on and this time if Mr. Taylor grabs it, it'll be all right. Oops. Pilchards are so handy, they're such a great bait. Just a little bit tangled around the end of the rod. Good. Um, yeah, pilchards are awesome. In WA, they call them muleys. I'm not quite sure why they call them muleys, but I don't know why we call them pilchards either. I think um, in other parts of the world they would call them sardines. I don't think it'll take long to get a bite. Uh, all right, well, I'll put this one here and I'll... Nothing on there. Got my little mini portable cutting board. I'm going to take the scales off it. I don't want the scales on this guy. Look at that. Beautiful. No special filleting method here. Just going to cut it in. Don't worry, I'm aware of where my hand is. It's going to, um, I'm just running along the backbone. Just using it for a quick bait, so. Alrighty. I might do a bait like that. Cut that piece there and then I might do another strip. That's, I want a bait about that long. And I can trim this guy and use him for bait as well. I think I'll use this one first there. Ah, look at it. I'll just tie this hook. Oh, I better come down and grab that. <laughs> I was tying the hook on. Ah, would you look at this? I have a giant flathead on top and a salmon on the bottom. And look, with the salmon, the stinger hook has done it again. So I got this guy. Just put him here for a second and I'll remove this little flathead. Amazing. They can still spike you at this size, so you've got to be careful. 
I don't really want to get jabbed by the flathead. Cool, look, I got my worm bait back. That's good. Let this guy go. I think I'll um, finish rigging my other rod before I throw this out again. I had a, uh, a single hook on this rig before, just this large Ado hook. But what I've done is I've put, you know, it's still a large hook. I think this one's still a 6.0. So I'm going to use this setup for my um, slab bait, which I've got here. I'm going to put my big hook in here. Sometimes I improvise. It's pulling it all the way through the flesh. So you can see it's going all the way through there. And then I'm going to set it up so that the barb goes through about the length of the hook. Oops. So that's kind of sitting in there like that. I'm just going to, all I'm going to do is Put this one through there like that. That's all I'm going to do. Chuck that out. So we'll see what happens with that bit of salmon. Actually, if you look at that, that's not really working very well like that. Look, it's not sitting very well. So what I need to do actually is um, do a half hitch around there to hold it in position so it doesn't slide like that. That'll be better. I threw that I threw that bit of salmon out and while I was holding it actually it's gone I had a fish on though A bit of salmon's been well... Oh, look at that. No way. Look, that hook actually has been bitten off. And the only reason I haven't lost it is because I put the half hitch around there. So that would have been a big tailor. As soon as that salmon hit the water, it got nailed. Mm. You should look at that. Just up behind me. Have a look at that sky. That's amazing. You should see the sky behind me while I'm playing this fish. It's amazing. There you go, it's Terry Taylor. At least I won't have a problem with the tailor using the, the rig with the wire trace. It's actually a relief. You know, I, um, 
I threw out a slammin, a slammin. <laughs> I threw out a slab of salmon a couple of minutes ago. It only hit the, it hit the water on my other line. It didn't even get a chance to put the rod in the rod holder. It got nailed. Undoubtedly, it was a big tailor because, well, at anyway, bit through a 30-pound leader really easily. This guy doesn't want to let go of the hook. So I've actually opted not to chuck the other line back out again at the moment because I know I'm just going to get nailed by a tailor and probably just get bitten off again. You'll notice on my... Um, I've actually got a circle hook on my deadliest rig in this case. The stinger isn't a circle, but the big hook's a circle and he was hooked in the corner of the mouth, that tailor. So I'll chuck it back out again. Okay. Oh. Oops. Got off. <laughs> I caught that uh, tailor before. There's a lot of tailor out there and they're just going to bite me off. So what I've decided to do is sacrifice this tailor, or the top part of his shoulder anyway. So I've cut his head off with a bit of the shoulder, like so. And I'm going to just put it through his um, bottom jaw or top jaw. Might have put it through his top jaw. Pull the hook through the top jaw. Is that enough barb sticking out? Probably not. It's a little bit better, a bit more barb sticking out. So I'm going to chuck this guy out and. Uh, I don't expect a tailor's going to eat that. His, brother, his brothers might come along and mangle him a bit, but something big, big may take it. So I'm just going to whack it out in the, just the top of this gutter. Pretty big, heavy bait, but should be all right. Something's attacking this tailor head. I reckon it would just be other tailor just trying to smash up that flesh. You know, you're just getting little bites like that. You can see the rod, every now and then it's just whacking like that, it's a bite. I'm really only likely to catch either a shark or a mulloway on a bait like that. See how we go. Yep, got him. I like to get close to the water because it might get a little bit wet, but it's going to be a bit easier to handle the fish. It's starting to get a little bit dark. I can't really see where the fish is. There we go. So the stinger does the job again on that, on this salmon. Salmon this size are really sweet, and we we kind of either eat them with a beer batter or. I turn them into Thai fish cakes. Really easy to make. 
Anyways, I think I better check my other line. Swimming towards me. Wow. Man, this is swimming towards me at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, I've got it. Man, that was just um, coming this way really quick. I think it's a tailor. Pretty sure. It's going to winch it in. Not muck around with it. Oops. It fell off just on the shore. But I just put a bit of that salmon fillet on this rig. And that was a tailor that had taken the salmon. So I'll chuck it back out again. Yep. What was that? Feels like a heavy log. <laughs> it's strange. These don't normally eat pilchard. Okay. Goodbye. Another amazing afternoon on the beach. The usual culprits, lots of salmon, lots of tailor, plenty of action, and I'm going home with a good feed. Make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you really soon in the next video.